You won't get tired of dying, will you? Where's my beak? Lodged in your forehead, of course. You won't get tired of my voice, will you? Let's go somewhere more private. So I can eat you. <laughs> It seems you couldn't make it to my show, so I brought the show to you! Show times are on the hour, not a moment before and not a moment later! It's time to take your final bow! I'm sorry, but there was never enough room on this stage for both of us! A performance was demanded of me, and now I have delivered! Encore! Did things get really hot in here, or is it just me? Come and burn with me! The fire within me burns eternal, and now you shall as well! I am a burning reminder of your misdeeds! You were always destined to fail. You blinked. Why is this new prison? Is it me trapped? Or is it you? Perhaps it is us both. I may be missing my face, but even I could see this car. Please deposit five coins. Please deposit five coins. Please deposit five coins. You are attempting to trick Freddy! You are attempting to... <laughs> Freddy doesn't like this. Thank you for depositing five coins. <laughs> Never underestimate the cunning of a pirate. Or a fox, for that matter. Arr, you never stood a chance! Arr, I came for ye booty. That be treasure, you know. I can't run like I used to, but I can pull myself apart just fine. Arr, so much more spacious in here. I may stay a while. Let me put you back together, then take you apart all over again. Let's see how many times you can be pulled apart. I assure you, I am very real. This time, there is more than an illusion to fear. We know who our friends are, and you are not one of them. Don't be afraid. Soon you will look just like me. Beautiful! Now I get to play Take Apart and Put Back Together. You won't feel a thing. I wanted to wait until just the right moment to drop in. It's so much more fun to eat out in here with you. He's here and always watching. The one you shouldn't have killed. I never thought I'd make it to that event. But now we are together. Let me show you how to break your face and look like me. I was the first. I have seen everything. Come closer. Let's smile together. I have seen him. The one you shouldn't have killed. I am remade, but not by you. By the one you should not have killed. No light can save you now. I have always been hiding in your shadow. What a gift to relish. A victim that can't perish. 
I am given flesh to be your tormentor. Looks like something bad happened. I guess you forgot about me. Want to see the scooping room? I guess you forgot about me. That's right! And don't you come back now, you hear? That'll teach you for trying to trick this old bird. Thought you could fool me with that sign, but I was too smart for you. I may not like wet floors, but the smell of fresh meat is just too enticing. <laughs> Whoops, looks like you're the one that slipped up this time. Char, what can I do for you? Yarg, how may I be of service to ya? Yar, who touched me bird? Yar, me bird likes you, so I'll do ye a favor. Yar, ye win some, ye lose some. Yar, ye play with fire and sometimes ye get burned. That game was totally rigged! That's what you get for leaving me hanging! It's not my fault. I have these fat plastic fingers and can't press the buttons. Mr. Hubs got me again. If I get jump scared, you get jump scared. I could hear you breathing. Admit it, you wanted to let me in. Why do you hide inside these walls? Don't be shy. These are strange circumstances that have brought us together. Time for your controlled shock. Time for your controlled shock. Let's see how many pieces I can cut you into. You won't die, but you'll wish you could. It feels like my birthday. Did you have a gift for me? You don't really know who your employer is, do you? I heard your call. It feels like home. You're not who I expected to see. Did I catch you off guard? You should have known I'd find you. Two. One. Where are you? You played right into our hands. Did you really think that this job just fell out of the sky for you? No. This was a gift for us. You gathered them all together in one place. Just like he asked you to. All of those little souls in one place. Just for us. A gift. Now we can do what we were created to do. And be complete. I will make you proud, Daddy. Watch. Listen. And be full. Seeing you powerless is like music to me. I don't hate you. But you need to stay out of my way. I recognize you, but I'm not afraid of you. Not anymore. The others are under my protection. The others are like animals, but I am very aware.
turn your back for one second and I'm like, was you, ninja skills. You and I don't get to talk as often as I'd like. Everyone underestimates me. But then they turn their back and I'm like, boo. And they're like, what? Move over, Freddy Fazbear. Happy Frog is the new star of the show. We've only just begun. I will never let you leave. I will never let you rest. Hello? I always come back. Don't get distracted. I'm ready for my close-up. Today is all about me, me, me. I consider it a dignified death. Not really. It was actually quite pathetic. If you sit by the river long enough, you will see the body of your enemy float by. <laughs> Even monkeys fall from trees. The nail that sticks out gets hammered down. The talented hawk hides his claws. What did you think of my act? I don't get out much, so you'll have to forgive my enthusiasm. I hope you enjoyed the grand finale. Now is my time to shine. He tried to release you. He tried to release us. But I'm not going to let that happen. I will hold you here. I will keep you here. No matter how many times they burn us. Don't you hate getting killed by obscure secondary characters? Stranger danger! <laughs> I was just waiting for you to drop your guard. Whoops! That's gonna leave a mark. This is how it feels. And you get to experience it over and over and over again. Forever. I will never let you leave. You and I will be making music together for a long, long time. You hear that? It's the sweet, sweet sound of your eternal silence. Hey, keep it down, would ya? When I'm here, you play by my rules. A song was requested of me, and now I sing it! Shh. It will all be over soon. Shh. There is room for one more. Shh. Come spend eternity inside with me. Thanks for letting me join.
disappoint. Knock knock! I'm here! My friend, you have met a terrible, terrible demise. But, uh, you know, I, I don't feel too bad about it. After all, if, if it weren't for me, it would have just been from someone else, you know? I guess what I'm trying to say is life, life goes on. Well, well from, for everyone else, life goes on. Not, not for you. You're, you're dead. But that's neither here nor there. It reminds me of one summer day in the park. I was having just a delightful picnic with my good friend Orville. And I said to him, I said, Orville, I, I have a story. And he said to me, what's the significance of the story? And I said to him, Orville, not every story has to have significance, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes a story is just a story. If you try to read into every little thing and find meaning in everything anyone says, you'll just drive yourself crazy. I had a friend do it once. Wasn't pretty. We talked about it for years. And not only that, but you'll likely end up believing something you shouldn't believe and thinking something you shouldn't think or, or assuming something you shouldn't assume, you know? Sometimes, I said, a story is, is just a story. So just be quiet for one second of your life and eat your sandwich, okay? Of course, it was only then I realized I made sandwiches, and poor Orville was having such difficulty eating it. Elephants have those clumsy hands, you know. Actually, I, I suppose that's the problem. They don't have hands at all, do they? They're, they're all feet. I, I couldn't imagine someone asking me to eat a sandwich with my feet. Now, if I recall correctly, there was a bakery nearby. I, I said to him, Orville, Oh, let me go get you some rye bread. Now, I'm unsure if elephants enjoy rye bread, but I assure you that Orville does. Now, this was on a Tuesday, which was good because rye bread was always fresh on Tuesday. They made sourdough bread on Monday and threw it out Wednesday, or rather they sold it at a discount for people wanting to feed the ducks, and then probably at the end of the day, finally, they threw it all out. I, I don't recall. I do remember a man who would bring his son to the bakery every Wednesday and then go feed the ducks. He would buy all of the sourdough bread. Of course, you know, you're not supposed to feed the ducks sourdough bread at all. It swells up in their stomach and then they all die. It, uh, at least, at least that's what I've heard. You know, I, I never saw any ducks die myself, but I did notice a substantial decrease in the duck population over the course of a few years. I just never thought to stop the man and tell him that he was killing the ducks by feeding them sourdough bread. And if you want my opinion on the matter, <laughs> and I told Orville this as well, if you want to feed ducks or birds or any kind for that matter, it's best to buy seed. I mean, when you think about it, breads of any sort don't occur in nature. They don't grow on trees or spring up from the bushes. I don't think birds know what to do with bread. What was I saying? Oh, oh, yes, yes. So I bought Orville some rye bread. What a fine day it was. Ah, uh, it seems that you have met your end. Oh, what a pity. You know, I, I don't feel too bad about it, though. After all, if it weren't me, it would have just been one of the others, I guess. And I'm honestly just glad to be out of those air ducts. You know, it's, it's not easy for a hippopotamus to fit up there. And... 
not easy to get down either, and not as young as I used to be, as you can see. I used to be able to do all the sorts of things. You're young, you're vibrant, you have that sort of pep in your step. Uh, it reminds me of a conversation I was having with one of my good friends, Orville. We were having a nice picnic one day. I believe it was summer, no, perhaps it was... Was it the fall? Yes, 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 it was the fall because the leaves had turned already. But I said to Orville, I, I says, Orville, I have a story to tell you. And Orville looked at me, you know, kind of odd and, and said, well, what's it about? I, I said to him, not every story has to be about something, Orville. Sometimes a person just wants to talk. Why does everything have to be a story? I said to him. He just looked at me and he said, well, you, you, you said you had a story. And, you know, he was quite right. I did, in fact. I told him I had a story. I suppose if a person just wants to talk, then... It's best to not announce that you're telling a story. Telling a story does come with its own pressures and expectations, I, I suppose. After all, if you're just talking to a friend, then there's no more expectations than if you were talking into the wind. Words by themselves aren't expected to carry, aren't expected to stick. But if, you know, if you announce you're telling a story, well then... There'd better be a point to it all, you know? No one wants to sit and listen to someone ramble on and on and on with absolutely no end in sight. So, you know, it's, it's good to be mindful that when you tell someone that you're about to tell a story, that you have something to say. Telling someone that you're going to tell them a story is tantamount to asking them to stop what they're doing and, and pay attention. You're basically saying, hey, 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 buddy, stop everything. Stop what you're thinking. I have a solution to everything. And, well, I didn't really have any story to tell. In, in hindsight, I, I probably just misspoke when I said that I had a story. I think it would have just been better to tell Orville that I wanted to tell him something rather than tell him that I had a story. But, you know, even then, it might have put too much importance on the whole thing. Either way, it was quite a nice day. I remember, I remember that we were drinking tea. Well, uh, it seems that your journey has ended. Very sorry about that. It was, it was always going to end this way, of course. If it weren't by me, it would have just been by some other, you know, terrible thing. Just, you could not imagine how terrible it would be. Just, I get scared thinking about it. I'm glad it's not me. It reminds me of a of a time I was speaking to my good friend Orville. We were we were sitting on a park bench watching the pigeons. I was on the left, he was on the oh wait, was I on the right or left? Anyways, it doesn't matter. We were sitting on there watching the pigeons. And uh I, I said to Orville, Friend, those birds are frozen. And he kinda looked at me like I'd lost my mind. But I reminded him that it was winter, you know, and Often birds will sit in a tree until they freeze, and then they, they, you know, sort of fall to the ground until the sun warms up, and, and they can, you know, move around again. So I said to Orville, you might as well save those breadcrumbs until the birds thaw, because they can't very well enjoy them in the condition they're in. To which he asked what I meant, and asking what condition the crumbs should be in before he threw them to the birds, assuming that I meant the birds couldn't enjoy the breadcrumbs in the condition that the crumbs were in, when in fact I had meant the birds could not enjoy them in the condition that the birds were in, considering that the birds were frozen. You know, so he took a moment and then threw his last handful onto the ground. I said to him, Orville, why did you throw the breadcrumbs to the birds when I just told you they're frozen? To which he responded, the breadcrumbs are not frozen. Again, misunderstanding my words. I didn't mean to say that the breadcrumbs were frozen when I said I told you they're frozen. I'd been referring to the birds. <sighs> you know, in hindsight, what, what I should have said was, and this would make perfect sense, why did you throw the breadcrumbs to the birds when the birds are frozen? He misunderstood upon my correction, stating that he didn't know what else to do with the breadcrumbs and that perhaps, you know, when the birds thawed, they'd still be able to eat the crumbs. So I, I, I said to Orville, I said, and this is what I said to him, I said, Orville, the birds may be dead. <sighs> it seems that you have met a, a horrible demise, my friend, but, uh, you know, these... 
these things happen and, and life life goes on. Not for you, obviously. You're you're dead. But uh it reminds me of a time I was I was having a conversation with my friend Orville. We were uh where were we? I think we were by the with the the river, we were sitting by the river and watching the fish leap over the falls, and uh, I I said to Orville, you know, sometimes I feel like a fish leaping over and over again, always trying to get somewhere, though I don't know where, only to find myself in the jaws of a beast. He, of course, looked at me uh, surprised. You know, have you been in the jaws of a beast, friend? To which I said, no, of course not, Orville. I said, no, 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 no. I simply meant that life can seem like a relentless endeavor to overcome meaningless obstacles, only to meet an equally meaningless fate, regardless of your efforts, regardless of the obstacles you've passed. And uh, Orville, he, he, he stood and proceeded to drape me with a picnic cloth, to which I, I, I asked him, I said, friend, what, what are you doing? He looked at me very concerned, really. I feel like you've gotten too much sun. Indeed, <laughs> indeed I had. He proceeded to pour me a glass of just ice-cold lemonade. Ooh, you ever mix it with iced tea? You do like a little half lemonade, half, ooh, it's so, you should try it some, well you can't because you're dead, but anyways, so you may be asking yourself, how did I go from sitting by the falls and drinking lemonade to being wedged in the air duct? Not only with Orville, but with an entire assortment of fruity colored friends. Well, there's, uh, there's really no good answer to that, but perhaps I met a demise of my own at some point, and this is my afterlife, or my dream, whatever it might mean. I, I honestly don't know. Or maybe it doesn't mean anything at all. Maybe it doesn't mean anything at all. for you to help you get settled in on your first night. Um, I actually worked in that office before you. I'm finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact, so I know it can be a bit overwhelming, but I'm here to tell you there's nothing to worry about. Uh, you'll do fine. So let's just focus on getting you through your first week, okay? Uh, let's see. First, there's an introductory greeting from the company that I'm supposed to read. It's kind of a legal thing, you know. Um, welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a magical place for kids and grown-ups alike, where fantasy and fun come to life. Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for damage to property or person. Upon discovering that damage or death has occurred, a missing person report will be filed within 90 days or as soon as property and premises have been thoroughly cleaned and bleached and the carpets have been replaced. Blah, blah, blah. Now, that might sound bad, I know, but there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but do I blame them? No. If I were forced to sing those same stupid songs for 20 years and I never got a bath, I'd probably be a bit irritable at night, too. So remember, these characters hold a special place in the hearts of children, and we need to show them a little respect. Right? Okay. So just be aware... The characters do tend to wander a bit. Uh, they're left in some kind of free-roaming mode at night. Uh, something about their servos locking up, they get turned off for too long. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too. But then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? Uh, now, concerning your safety, the only real risk to you as a night watchman here, if any, is the fact that these characters, uh, if they happen to see you after hours, probably won't recognize you as a person. They'll, they'll most likely see you as a metal endoskeleton without its costume on. Now, since that's against the rules here at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, they'll probably try to forcefully stuff you inside a Freddy Fazbear suit. Um, now, that wouldn't be so bad if the suits themselves weren't filled with cross 
knots, beams, wires, and animatronic devices, especially around the facial area. So you can imagine how having your head forcefully pressed inside one of those could cause a bit of discomfort and death. Uh, the only parts of you that would likely see the light of day again would be your eyeballs and teeth when they pop out the front of the mask. <laughs> yeah, they don't tell you these things when you sign up. But hey, first station of the breeze. I'll chat with you tomorrow. Uh, check those cameras and remember to close the doors only if absolutely necessary. Gotta conserve power. Alright, good night.